Well, good morning, y'all. I tell you what, it's a pleasure to be here. For 20 years, I made a living riding bulls, and uh, so every day I got out of bed, I had a 1,800-pound mad as hell bull waiting for me. So <laughs> I found out real quick: you better develop a good attitude, or you just ain't going to make it in that game. <laughs> But ironically, one of the things about bull riding, it's, it's, it's kind of a metaphor for life and it's a metaphor for business because, you know, we all have those challenges every day and everything that uh, we get out of bed, there's, there's something challenging facing us. And, and how you handle it mentally is kind of determines how, you're gonna, how, how your outcome is going to be. And one of the things I found in bull riding, the number one thing that I had to deal with when I went to the rodeo to face that bull was not the bull. It was other people's opinion of that bull, you know, and uh, you know you got uh, two different opinions. You got someone that uh, uh, he tell, "Oh, you got him drawn." Oh man, I tell you what, I'm glad it's you and not me. I mean, this some bucks kill five guys and you're gonna be number six, you know. And so, you know, so, and I mean, they just go on and on about and, and build him up, just you know, to pretty much you. Jesus couldn't come down and ride him, you know. And and then you talk to another guy and he goes, "Oh, you got him. Oh man, just right. That's the one I'd want, you know." So it's all. It's all an opinion, you know. It's kind of kind of take my girlfriend, you know. I think she's beautiful, she's wonderful, treats me great, uh, but my wife has a different opinion of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you got to be careful with them opinions, you know. <laughs> so, so when I, you know, luckily I, I, I uh, after struggling in bull riding, I, I, I read a book called Psycho Cybernetics, and it was by the great uh, Maxwell Maltz, and. Uh, you know, he, he taught me attitude, you know, and, and taught me more than anything how the mind works. And I didn't really understand at the time that it'll work for you or it'll work against you. and It doesn't care. Whatever you program in, it's going to give you back. You know, and when you worry about something going wrong, you create, you, you cause that to go wrong. You know, and, and in bull riding, if you worry about this bull hooking you or throwing you off and stomping you, uh, you're, you're worrying about the wrong thing. You, want, you need to be worrying about how fun it's going to be to sit in the middle of that sunbuck, to step off of him and go get a check, you know, the, the applause of the crowd, you know, you know. And, uh, you know, and the great thing about bull riding is what other job you got, you only work eight seconds a day. You know? So, so, so the, the, the job was rough, but, it, you know, the hours were good, you know. <laughs> but once I got into it and got into, the, got into it mentally, and, and one of the things that, that, I, that I learned to do is what they call role modeling. You find the person that you want to be, and this was one of the greatest champions that, that ever lived that I role model. And, and one of the key things that I would do when I rode a bull was to pretend that I was him. And, and I found one of the things that helped me do was to leave my lack of confidence behind, my anxiety behind, and I would take on his great confidence and his great ability. And by doing it the first year, the, in fact, the first bull I got on, I ended up one point off the all-time record after mentally rehearsing for about two months before I went to that rodeo. And uh, I ended up runner-up for the world's championship behind him that year, and I ended up uh, second at the, uh, the NFR that year behind him. So I, I come a long way in a short period of time just by role modeling a great champion. I had the honor of working uh, with uh, Luke Perry on the movie Eight Seconds. They wanted me to teach him how to ride bulls. They called me up. They said, we hear you're the world's best teacher. I said, I am, but I'm expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> you deal with Hollywood, you better let them know up front. You're going to cost some money because they will, <laughs> they will squeeze that nickel till the Indian's riding the buffalo. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, so uh, they said, we want you to teach this guy, but you can't, you can't put him on a bull to do it. So. Um, how in the hell do you do that? <laughs> so, so I said, sure, I can do that. You know, but in reality, he was an actor. So actors are, are, you know, they're paid pretenders. They're pretending they're somebody else. And they get into what they call character. They try to, to feel and imagine what it's like to be that character that they're portraying. And here he's, he's imagining that he's a bull rider. He's got to imagine what it's like to ride a bull. And, you know, I do all the training with him. I, I see him got equitation lessons. We did horseback drills every day. We did all the drills that we do. But in reality, he's never experienced a bull ride, except in his mind. 
And so the producer fired me every day. So we can't afford you. It ain't going to work. This guy ain't going to be able to ride. You know, and I said, yeah, he is, you know. So I'd go over to the director, John Alverson. He'd rehire me. You know? so, <laughs> so, so I got hired and refired every day. So the day that, that Luke Perry was to get on that bull, uh, everyone was doubting whether he was going to be able to do it. But, uh, you know, when he got on, he was pretending he was the great Lane Frost and made one of the most beautiful rides you've ever seen, you know. So it just, again, re reaffirmed my belief in, in role modeling. Find who you want to be and then just copy them. You know, it's very simple. You know? How much time I got left? <laughs> Five seconds. Five seconds. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Well, anyway, in, in closing, uh, a little story about uh, um, two kids. They put them in a room, one, one optimist, one pessimist. Uh, the little optimist, uh, um, they put him in a room full of uh, horse manure. The little pessimist, they put him in a room full of uh, toys. They come back in about 30 minutes. The little pessimist had the toys tore up, and he was crying. They come into the room with a little optimist, and he was digging through the horse manure, singing and whistling. They said, how come you're so happy? He said, with all this horse manure, there's got to be a pony somewhere. <laughs> Thank you very much.